Hello, everyone, and good evening. Welcome to today's webinar session brought to you by Siksha.com and Oklahoma City University, US. The topic for today's webinar is consider studying MBA from Oklahoma City University, US. Before starting up with the presentation, I would like to introduce our panelists, our presenters for today. The first presenter for today's webinar is Mr. Aaron Wielbarger, Director of International Admissions at the University. Our second pres uh, presenter is Ms. Cindy Tradeway, Assistant Director, MBA Program and Graduate Advisor. I welcome you both. I would now request Aaron to please take further the presentation. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Shiksha, for uh, providing this opportunity. And thank you all for uh, tuning in to us. Uh, it's our pleasure to present our university uh, and then also our MBA program, which I think uh, as soon as we get through this, uh, you'll find intriguing uh, and worthwhile uh, and beneficial for you as your career develops uh, along. Um, one of the things uh, I like to do is introduce Oklahoma to a lot of people because uh, a lot the United States is full of different places uh, and so Oklahoma is one of those. As you can see, we are located in the southern central part of the United States um, in the state of Oklahoma. Uh, which is kind of, as you see, kind of if you're familiar with some states, uh, we're right above Texas, uh, just to the left of the screen, far left is California, all the way over, and then up north, uh, well, our north, but to the, to the right top is New York area, and then to the bottom right uh, is Florida area. So we're right in the middle, and I'll kind of go over more about Oklahoma City for you. Um, but the university is located in Oklahoma City, hence the University of Oklahoma City, or University of Oklahoma City. So uh, we, we uh, are located in the downtown area. So we are a private metropolitan university. Uh, in fact, we are technically outside of the medical school. We are the only university in the metropolitan area that has an actual size campus. Uh, there are other universities that may have a building or so, uh, but we actually have dormitories, uh, which I'll talk about, and um, an actual size university campus in the metropolitan area. So we are not that young. We're over 100 years old. We have been here for quite a while, doing this for quite a while. Um, and we've enhanced our programs uh, and we've uh, adapted to the size of the city and adapted to what uh, probably companies are looking for from our students. Uh, and we've been able to do that very well. Uh, we have 3,000 students. So kind of hovers around there. Uh, 70 plus undergraduate programs and 20 plus graduate programs. Uh, currently right now, uh, we have around 100 international, which is roughly about uh, around four to three percent of the uh, student population. Uh, currently this fluctuates, uh, but 43 countries are represented on this university. Uh, India being one of the largest that's represented uh, on our campus. Next slide. So uh, we're, we're more than just MBA. We have a variety of uh, programs for our students. Like I said, we have the undergraduate programs and we have the graduate programs and we have a few even doctoral type programs. Um, our degree pathways uh, within these programs consists within STEM, which would be a, the hard sciences, anywhere between like um, your chemistries, biologies, um, computer sciences, stuff like that. Uh, we have humanities programs. Uh, we have other programs, mine is just the MBA under the business. Uh, we have nursing school, which provides an excellent nursing programs, uh, theater. We have law school, and then we also have a music and dance programs. 
Uh, one of the great things about the university is that we consistently tend to be listed in U.S. News and World Report, which is a ranking system within the United States um, that a lot of universities look for, uh, and it's a privilege to be on. And so we tend to always be ranked uh, within U.S. News and World Reports. Uh, we've had the privilege of winning a few things uh, and that's under our uh, college raptor has nominated us uh, for i'm assuming 20 2021 um because we're not into 21 yet but the school is the semester as the southwest uh regional area so one of the top 25 schools within the southwest college areas and then also notified us as a hidden gem uh and if, you're not familiar that's maybe a slang more in the u.s but a hidden gem basically means a great school uh for probably the price that you are for what you do for the value the whole package of, of what a university can offer uh and so we we got nominated for uh, that within the u.s so so we're quite proud of that so all that to say is that uh one, we were, we're a ranked school. Our programs are highly, highly accredited. Um, they're uh, very well taught uh, by our professors uh, and the, the programs are really catered towards, towards what you want to be looking for and what you would need. Next slide. So as I was saying, uh, on we have dormitories on our campus. So uh, like so we we're not just one building, or we're not just a couple of buildings. Uh, we have multiple buildings. We have we have quite a few what we would call acres uh, of land uh, within the downtown area or within the metropolitan area. Uh, and so. One of the things is we have dormitories. We have this for the undergraduate sections, and then we also have even for the graduate sections. Um, I, I remember my time at school, I had no swimming pool whatsoever at, at the dormitories, but we have it for you. So we want to accommodate you uh, as best as possible. We have a cafeteria uh, for you, and then we also have food court section. Um, which you can go in and then uh, in most of these places you're able to cook your own food uh, and I'll kind of go more into that but uh, as far as the dormitories uh, we want to make sure uh, you know you're, you guys are traveling far you know you're, you're traveling a long distance to come uh, and we want you to feel welcome we want you to feel at home uh, and we want you you know to be relaxed statistically shows the more relaxed you are the better you can concentrate on school uh, and your worries tend to go away so um, school is stressful enough we don't want you to be stressed out about being away from home on top of school so uh, we try to accommodate you as best as possible next slide so we it, because we're in the metropolitan area we kind of have to incorporate the city uh it's it's quite important to us uh kind of the slogan here is uh, we are oklahoma city's university kind of some play on words there um uh, but we we are part like i talked about we're really technically the only major university within the metropolitan area uh, so uh, we're very well connected to companies and corporations that are within the city in the metropolitan area. Uh, but there's there's a lot of things. You know, o Oklahoma City is roughly close to just a little under, I think, mostly around eight thousand. Uh, then if you kind of include the kind of the suburb areas around Oklahoma City, then we would make up just over a million people. So uh, we're not we're not huge like you would find in in a big uh, city like in India, but um, we do have quite a bit amenities for you. Uh, we have professional sports. Uh, we we have uh, corporations like headquartered corporations uh, within the Oklahoma City area, mostly within our uh, natural energy type companies, uh, which has a lot of money it's gas you know and uh, so uh, they do tend to be seeking for hiring people within within the area so 
Uh, one of the great things about uh, the university is, like I said, the location that we're, we're with and the connections that we have with the city itself. We're right next to the, the closest district area uh, is the Asian district area. So uh, you'll have the opportunity to find your food. Uh, we have several different uh, Indian restaurants that are, we literally have one just right across the street from us. <laughs> So, um, and then we have Asian markets where you can find your food. So uh, this is how I, I tend to say, we want you to feel at home. You, you'll actually have a better spot at our university than other universities just because of the nature of where we're located uh, next to the market areas that provide um, the foods that you may be eating at, in your home country or what, what mom may be eating or mom may be cooking for you in your home country. So kind of gets you a little closer to, closer to home. So um, at this time, um, I, I want to make sure if you have any questions, please feel free to, to let us know. Uh, uh, you can chat with us and we'll try to take either answers while we're doing the presentation or we'll wait till the very end to answer uh, some of the questions. Um, but feel free to, while we're kind of moving along this presentation, to, to ask any type of questions, um, even if it's related to the university or, um, you know, if it's very specific towards an MBA program, to, towards what we do. Um, so at this time, I'm going to kick it off to my colleague, Cindy Treadway. She's going to kind of go more specific into the MBA. Uh, like I said, I, I think you'll find it very um, intriguing, exciting program. Uh, it's worthwhile towards you. Uh, and I'll let Sydney take it over from here. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, let me put you to the next slide. I'll begin talking about the MBA program uh, itself. Uh, I would like to introduce myself as we as we look at this, um, I have had the honor of working at Oklahoma City University in this capacity, working with MBA students since 2002. In that time, um, our MBA program and all programs have modified greatly, and so it's been interesting to watch the evolution of of uh, how the Master of Business Administration degree uh, is, is regarded internationally and how we can continue to update it to equip our students for their future careers. Um, Oklahoma City University is a private university, and we uh, value the opportunity to be able to, to easily modify our programs. We are relatively small. And so we know our students. Those are some tremendous benefits. We are a liberal arts university, which means we place a high value on critical thinking. And uh, many, many surveys in, in business in recent years talk about success in a career has not to do specifically with courses taken and grades earned, but it's the individual's ability to continue to take in new information, use critical thinking skills to analyze the information at hand and then suggest decisions. At its heart, a Master of Business Administration is a degree that is designed to help equip someone to be a decision maker and a problem solver in an organization. It is not a specialist degree and it does not require an undergraduate degree in business to be able to pursue it. So uh, some of the program benefits of our Master of Business Administration um, we do place a, a strong emphasis in what we refer to as our leadership MBA on the importance of communication skills. Um, if you think about people who are successful in business, it is not usually just a hard skill set having to do with analytics. It has to do with being able to understand information, capture what you think the best thing to do is, and then be able to communicate it to others and have them come on board with it. So toward that, we have a strong emphasis on personality testing, thinking about thinking about um, an individual's own defaults as far as 
as how they react to uh, situations and being aware of that. If you are conscious of it, then you can help control that in your own career development. So we do that through a very specialized program called the CDR assessment program that is included in, um, in one of the primary classes that we focus on in our, in our leadership MBA. It's important as someone is seeking out a, a, an MBA program or any graduate program to look carefully and you want to gather a lot of information, we are AACSB accredited. If you're not already familiar, AACSB accreditation is the premier level of business school accreditation internationally. For a school to have that level of accreditation, it is the confirmation that their content is current, appropriate, relevant. It is preparing students for the future in business and and is is very regularly validated it has to do with the level of training of the faculty it has to do with the content that's presented in the degree program uh, it has to do with with the student services that are available from the university it has to do with are, is the university um, admitting appropriate students to the program so the students who are admitted move through and graduate from the program. So it is the greatest stamp of approval of any business school. So as you are seeking, uh, seeking a credible institution to pursue a Master of Business Administration, I, I would strongly urge you to, to look for that AACSB accreditation. We have that and that puts us in the top four and a half percent of business schools internationally. So that is a marker that should be taken into great consideration. Um, you'll see in a moment as we review the content and the scheduling, we offer our MBA in what we refer to as a cohort format. What that means, if you're not familiar, is we admit a group of students uh, in the in the in our fall semester each year who begin in August. We admit the MBA students for that year. They begin in the fall and they they take classes in, from August, uh, August through December, and then they resume in January through spring, and then they finish the one-year MBA structure in summer. So students can enter in August and they finish in July. We have done this uh, in the one-year MBA program to help create a sense of, of great efficiency for all of the students who enter our program, for, uh, for our, our students who are from the US, it allows them if they are recent graduates and completing their undergraduate degree, their bachelor's degree, it allows them to come in and study in a very intense, rigorous format to complete their degree in one year and then enter into their career aspirations. And when they enter in, they will be entering in at a different place in that career trajectory than if they started with a bachelor's degree. Um, if someone is uh, already has years of professional working experience and they want to come to the U.S. to study for an MBA, that also creates a high level of efficiency in that in that they may be stopping out of their of their full time uh, income generating professional activities and they come to the U.S. for a year and then they're able to return back to back to um, that work, work in a full-time capacity after a very short period of time. But by developing the classes in this cohort nature, that allows us to not just have students come here to study the content at Oklahoma City University, but they are actually studying with a group of students that they will get to know and they will continue with them across that year, just like in the workplace. When we have, when we have peers, when we have colleagues, we start to work with them and we understand where where their value is that complements our own skill set and we collaborate and we learn from our colleagues so so what we have found since 2015 when we started the cohort format is that we create much greater bonds and students support each other students work in study groups together they're taking the same classes they're hearing the same thing and they're able to one student sharing uh, sharing their interpretation with another um, can benefit them both if we if we could let's move on to the next slide um, Oklahoma City University is a small is a relatively small school which also allows us to know our students 
in a very in-depth way. That is true for me as the advisor, as I work with students before they come in and begin the program as we establish expectations and answer questions, but that's true of the faculty. Uh, we have, uh, it, as far as a university, our general student teacher ratio is about 20 to one. Our standard average cohort sizes within the MBA program for the one year MBA typically range from uh, about 12 to usually no more than 23 students in that group that the students would be studying with across that one year time frame. That means everyone gets to know each other. The faculty get to know the students, the students get to know and work with each other, and this really provides a much more collaborative and team oriented approach to the MBA coursework. Oftentimes as, uh, as students from outside of the US think about moving to the US and studying for a graduate degree, um, the, the idea is um, that they would be coming and they would be studying with students from the US primarily. Uh, I did a, a look yesterday and went back a couple of cohorts. Um, our, our averages for the students in the one year MBA, that's our full-time MBA program, we typically average about 25% of a cohort is comprised of students from outside of the US, from a variety of countries, that provides a true international opportunity. So if a student comes from India to study on our campus, they are, they are studying with primarily students who, who come from the US, uh, many from Oklahoma, but some from other states, as well as um, uh, international students who may come from other countries. So that really does a good job of preparing individuals for, for that workforce that they likely will be working with in the future. Uh, we, we focus in a great part, I said, on leadership. This is about developing communication skills, soft skills, the things that will really build into someone's career development. Uh, we have other opportunities that are also available to the students as they study in our MBA program, including uh, we have exceptional facilities. This is a, a beautiful picture from our uh, from the, the center of our building. Um, the MBA students study in what we refer to as our executive classrooms, uh, which are, are intimate and designed for a high level of interaction. We also have what we refer to as our Bloomberg Lab, in which we have, uh, we have nine student Bloomberg finance terminals. And that means that any of the students who are studying at Minder School of Business have access to this powerful financial uh, information, which is typically only available in banks and brokerages. So our students have the opportunity to become familiar with it and work with it. Students in the MBA program also have the opportunity to join what we re refer to as our investment team. Every, uh, every fall semester, uh, and usually in September, we form our investment club team. We have two of them, we have, uh, have two teams actually. Each are entrusted with $100,000 uh, US dollars to gather together, the team collaborates, they decide how they would like to invest those funds, um, they make presentations, and then they make those investments and they work with buying and selling stocks throughout that year with that real money um, that has been provided by Herman Minders, for whom Minders School of Business at Oklahoma City University is named, but they have that real world experience to be able to, for those that are interested in the financial industry, to be able to, to, uh, to make decisions and see what happens. Uh, so it is, that is real world, uh, real world opportunities for our students and, and they find that to be incredibly beneficial. Um, Lakshmi, if we could look at the next slide. The next slide is going to capture is going to capture what that one year MBA schedule looks like. Uh, when we present all of the courses for a student to earn our leadership MBA in one year, it is a um, it is a rigorous program. That means that we are looking for for students who are up to the task. Uh, we have designed it in a very specific way uh, in the first semester. The students take our effective leadership and communication class, which is kind of the cornerstone of the leadership MBA that includes in-depth personality testing, as well as accounting, business strategy, and data analysis. Those four classes are offered in the fall semester. The student would study four mornings a week, and each morning they would study a different topic. 
on Monday's leadership, on two day, Tuesday mornings accounting from 9 a.m. to noon, Wednesday's data analysis, Thursday's business strategy. It's a nice long class session from 9 a.m. to noon that the students are able to, to delve in and address the content and ask questions and work with it thoroughly. So after the, after the fall semester finishes in December, then they return in the spring semester and they have four more classes. Again, Monday through Thursday mornings from 9 a.m. to noon one long class session and then they have the whole week to do whatever they need to do after that. An applied economics class, managing at the crossroads of the global economic environment, marketing, finance, and advanced data analytics are the classes in the spring semester. Then we have a one week break and they take two classes in our first short summer term. Um, those two classes, strategic leadership, of the organization and ethical societal and legal environment of business. And that's a five and a half week term. As soon as that finishes, then they have the final two classes. We offer a, a course called Special Topics that allows us to, to program in a class that we believe is going to have great value to that cohort of students as they begin their careers, as well as our MBA capstone class. So four classes in the fall, four classes in the spring, to early summer, to late summer, from, from mid-August through mid uh, through late July the following year, all 12 classes to earn an MBA offered in a very efficient format for that cohort of students. Uh, next slide, Lakshmi. Uh, oftentimes, as students are, uh, prospective students are seeking out uh, different degree programs, um, there are some standard initial questions. Standard initial questions include how long will it take, how much will it cost, and do I need the GMAT exam? Um, Oklahoma City University, again, we're a small school and we know our students. We use um, the path to admission toward that question about GMAT. Um, we use what we refer to as a holistic approach to admission. Holistic means that we are taking into consideration a variety of, of pieces of information to help lead us to the final decision that we're making. If we admit this applicant into our MBA program, why do we believe she or he will be successful? We certainly don't want someone to come uh, to the other side of the world and enter a program to find out that, that they don't have the skill set to be successful uh, or to find out that it's not the program they had expected. So we spend a lot of time on the front end in, in thinking about, is this a good match for the student to come into our program? Uh, so in the application process, we will probably find that we are very different than many other universities. Um, the evidence that we are seeking we are we want to look at previous academic history what kind of a student has has the has the applicant been in the past have they been a good high performing student or did they have have grades that were uh, were not so indicative of what they would do if they were admitted to our program now um, did they did they struggle were they working as they were as they were pursuing their education were they a student athlete uh, did did it were they taking did it take many years to complete their bachelor's degree so we look across the academic transcript that shows us the courses taken and the grades earned and the time frame in which those were earned. To apply for an MBA is not required that you have an undergraduate degree in business. So we also take into consideration what was the area of the bachelor's degree that was earned. So we're gonna look at previous academic history. We're gonna look at, at the resume or CV to tell us more about that individual. In addition to the courses that they took that we see on their transcript, what else have they have they done in their time? Uh, if they were if they were an athlete, if they were working, uh, if they took leadership positions, those are all very important pieces. If they had won honors or awards, those are things that we that we would pick up on that. So academic background, experience that they have gained. We require at least two recommendations, and I believe uh, that there is even an electronic recommendation form that an applicant can share with possible recommenders. We require at least two recommendations. What other people say about you? Those would not be character references of, of 
you know, she is a she's a wonderful person, but it would be more speaking to to either a student, your student background from a faculty member or from a supervisor in a workplace. So we take that into consideration. But our well, our application process differs from so many others. You will typically be required for many applications to write a general statement. Why are you interested in pursuing this degree? And very often we find that that students say, I wonder what I should put into that. And they ask, they ask their friends. And then what we have are very general statements that all look alike. And so what we have done is we actually have three questions that we ask all of our international applicants to respond to. Those are questions that we believe get to the heart of to help us make that decision. If we admit this individual, why do we believe she or he would be successful? It has to do with, with reflection on your own strengths and weaknesses. One question has to do on collaboration. How do you work well uh, with others and in teams due to this cohort format? With this allows the, the applicant to take that fairly general question and really tailor make it to your own situation and allow you to connect the dots between the resume and the transcript. And so tell us what else you want us to know about you. So between academic background with your transcript, professional or work or leadership experience with your resume, the recommendations and the responses to the four questions, very often we may have enough information on which to base a positive admission decision. If we believe from those documents, limited number that are easy to pull together, if we believe that this does look like a good fit, we have the opportunity to, uh, to offer admission. Uh, I will say um, in, for admission in good academic standing, we require some of the applicant have an undergraduate grade point average that would be equivalent in the US system to at least a 3.0, which would be a B average. Sometimes we can look at someone's transcript and see that how the, the student they were as they started their undergraduate program was very different than the student they were when they completed that program. So um, if someone if someone has a, has a GPA average below that, we will still review that application. We're looking for overall information to lead us to make that decision. If we admit her or him, do we believe she will be successful in the program? So, so ours is a very different approach, but what it does is it allows us to more clearly identify the students we believe do have a good fit for our university and will be successful if they make that investment. Um, I, I would take one moment and touch on the English proficiency requirements for Oklahoma City University. Uh, we currently uh, require a minimum TOEFL of 83 or a 6.5 on the IELTS exam with no band, individual band below 6.0. So we are we're looking at we're looking at possible scholarly success on the part of the student, and in order to do that, we have to make sure that they have have strong English proficiency. Um, there is a note on this slide at the bottom that says conditional admission. Um, that is that refers to we may have a very good applicant for the MBA program academically, and that we see that they are a good fit who has not yet met that English proficiency requirement. That individual may go ahead and apply and we have the ability to make a decision for conditional admission that says you have a place here, okay, but you cannot, you cannot enter our program until that English proficiency requirement has been met. And so, so that's our assurance that if you meet that English proficiency, then you have a spot to join us in an August here in Oklahoma City. If we could, let's look at the next slide. And I think the next slide is going to key to, is going to, key to the cost estimates uh, for a student entering our program. Um, our, we are a small private university, as, as Aaron mentioned, which means that we do not have differential tuition rates for 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 students who are from the state of Oklahoma or the US 
versus students who are outside. Uh, so, so we are different than what you may see if you are reviewing public institution information. Our tuition for all students, there are a, a few numbers that aren't exactly right here, but the, but the, the sums are correct. Um, our tuition is $590 a credit hour, 590, which means that the tuition for each class is $1,770 tuition. I am proud to say that tuition rate is actually 37% less than our general Oklahoma City University graduate tuition. It is a special tuition rate that we have at the business school because we have uh, and basically provided a 37% scholarship to all of our students. Um, and that's domestic students as well as international students. What we did in 2013, now a number of years ago, is we modified our tuition and we reduced it to $1,770 per class for all students, international and domestic. That has remained our tuition rate since 2013, which I think uh, if you look at a variety of schools, that is basically unheard of. Um, and so we are very proud of that. We have general fees, which account for $465 a class. And um, there is there is one differential fee uh, for international students, and that is $175 per semester. Uh, for a for an international student for the additional documentation required. So we are a tremendous uh, a tremendous value. I don't want to say I don't want to say a bargain. Uh, I want to, uh, Aaron mentioned hidden gem. Uh, we are a we are a highly ranked top quality MBA program, but we are selective and we offer it at a very great value. So currently the tuition and fee portion for an international student studying at Oklahoma City University for that one year, 12 months of the MBA would be $27,700. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick this back to Aaron now because there are some other elements that go along with, with the cost forecast for international students, and he can speak to the I-20 elements. <clears throat> Thank you, Sydney. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah, so, <clears throat> sorry, when you're, as you guys are planning your studies and coming to the United States, uh, it's important to know, you know, what to expect. Uh, I understand the the program that program's attractive, um, but but am I prepared? Uh, and we want to just make sure that that you are prepared for when you do come to the, come to the United States and come to Oklahoma City University, that that you have a full understanding of of the cost. We don't want to surprise you. We don't want to <clears throat> sit there and throw out. Oh, by the way, there's this there's this fee here for you. You know that that you were unexpected. So. Uh, on our I-20, we really do reflect what the program is. Since it's a one-year program, <clears throat> typically on I-20s that schools put in place, they put, uh, it is based off one year, but it's two semesters. And this, we actually include the summer program too, included in it. So as you see on your I, on the I-20 and the actual cost, this is it. This is your total cost of, of the entire program. So that 27.7 includes all of the all of the hours included, everything that you need. <clears throat> Obviously, if if you're living on campus or off campus, some of the housing and meals, um, that's an estimate, and that's that's what you can figure into as far as your pricing. Um, your books and supplies. When we talk about supplies, we're talking about your your everyday needs. So books, yes, uh, are pretty standardized on on what you'll need. Uh, but supplies is up to you. That's that's kind of um, you're doing on on what you need and what you feel that you need. So yes, your total is uh, 45. Now I, I do know when when you're starting to compare other universities. Uh, 45 may may seem may seem high. Um, when I talked about how how we're always ranked within U.S. News and World Reports, uh, they also put out different tidbits about uh, pricing towards universities. Uh, and one tidbit that I found uh, that they did this is for 2020, so this is very relevant on um, price wise. 
was the average tuition for an MBA for a school is sixty to eighty thousand dollars. Now that's average. Obviously, you, there may be some that are lower. We're lower than than sixty thousand, uh, and then there are some that could be higher. Um, so we kind of fall into obviously the lower kind of range of that sixty eighty thousand. Um, but that just speaks to uh, the intrigue and more or less how, how we're nominated as a hidden gem. Uh, we have a great price range uh, for you, for your program. Uh, that's under the national average, uh, but it's a highly ranked program. So it speaks volume to, uh, to our university and how we're able to, how, able to accommodate you um, with your studies. So that's basically the how it looks financially uh, when you receive like your I-20. Obviously, if you're not sure what an I-20 is, that's the immigration document that you will get that you'll take to the U.S. Embassy uh, for them to review and to see if you can get your visa. Uh, so uh, I guess that basically, if you can go to the next slide, I do at this time, please, uh, before we kind of go kind of into it. This is just our general information, uh, but please provide us any sort of uh, questions that you may have. Uh, we'll be glad to answer those, uh, even if it's, like I said, it could be could be random, you know, like how's the weather, you know, in Oklahoma City? Uh, you know, what, what's going on? What are things to do? It could be, it could be all this. We, we'll be glad to answer. One of, the, one of the things I think you'll find a little bit different than, than other university is that as advisors, uh, we want to walk you through the application process. We don't want you to sit there and fumble along and try to think about, well, what exactly are you wanting? Um, kind of like how uh, within the, your statement of purpose, we actually provide three questions um, specific to what we're looking for. Uh, and so a lot of universities say, hey, write us a statement of purpose. But you may have no clue. What that what they're actually looking for. Uh, so we try to be very upfront with you. We we like I said we will help as best as possible uh, to guide you through um, through this process to make make it as painful as possible. Sorry, pain, painless as possible. Sorry, <laughs> I said painful. Painless as possible. We don't we don't want you to struggle through this. Um, you can connect with us in multiple ways. Uh, the the Minder School of Business, uh, and actually the MBA itself, but the School of Business is on numerous social media uh, means uh, through Facebook, through just look on the web, uh, Twitter, or Instagram. So I, I, I think all these uh, you should have readily available in India. Uh, so you can um, kind of just look us up, check us out. I, I recommend uh, and hot like actually encourage you to do it um you know because you want to know where you're, where you're going what's kind of it's all about not just listening to us but kind of has some better pictures and uh obviously you'll have students that are responding in the social media so you actually get a student to student peer understanding about the program itself uh so so yeah um I have no questions. Yeah. Yes, yes, we have lots of questions with us. I'm going okay. to start bombarding with the questions now. Excellent. Okay. So the first question we have is from Harsh. He's asking that uh, does the university accept BSc for three years, which is popular in countries like India? And what is the minimum work experience required or if we can do MBA without an experience? I'd, I'd be happy to respond to both of those. If I understood Hirsch's first question, uh, do we expect, accept a three-year bachelor's degree? And uh, the yeah. answer is we cannot accept a three-year bachelor's degree, as a, which I think, believe is typically 90 hours, um, as equivalent to a four-year bachelor's degree, which is required for admission into our program. But we do have an opportunity for someone with a three-year bachelor's degree to transition into the MBA program. We actually have two approaches that can that can work toward that. One is we have a program that is we refer to as our pre-MBA, 
which uh, allows the student to take 10 courses at Oklahoma City University, 10 undergraduate courses related to business to provide the credit hours that would allow us then to take the three-year bachelor's plus the 30 hours at our university to then be able to allow them to move into our MBA program. That is one approach that we refer to as the pre-MBA, and that can be accomplished in one year. The other approach is, uh, is an opportunity for the student to be admitted to Oklahoma City University as an undergraduate student and and complete and this would be on an individual basis determine how many hours it would take the opportunity to ultimately complete a bachelor of arts in liberal studies through oklahoma city university and if they go that path they would they would earn a bachelor a four-year bachelor's degree in the u.s by transferring in coursework that was taken previously. That is a, a individual student assessment and Aaron can help um, help coordinate that process. So I can I can speak to prospective students that may be interested in that that one year path. The pre-MBA does not yield a US four year bachelor's degree upon completion, but it is a vehicle to allow the student mm -hmm. to move in. Aaron, do you want to add anything to that before I address the next question? Um, no, it, it's I'll just kind of piggyback off that. Uh, so we do provide that kind of that two-way type pathway. One, you could actually get your bachelor's degree. Uh, you get that third, you, you, know, you have your three-year bachelor's in India, and then you can get your fourth year uh, here uh, with an actual bachelor's. So by the time you mm -hmm. actually leave Oklahoma City University, you would have your bachelor's and you'd have your master's program. Uh, so, uh, and then the other way, of course, is the pre-MBA. And what we typically what we typically do in those situations is we will help the student compare and contrast those two options. The coursework that they would take, the time frame it would take to complete it, the cost it would take, and and to work together to provide good information so the student would make their best decision. There is not a preferred one path over another. And so we, we want to be very, very transparent in that process. Uh, I believe the other question that came along with this is, is, is work experience required? Work experience is not required for the one year MBA program. That, that one year MBA opportunity is designed presumably for someone who may have just completed their bachelor's studies and may have not yet had even a full-time job. And they are interested mm -hmm. in getting directly into the MBA, completing it in an efficient fashion. So when they take their first career job, that they are entering that job market at a higher level. So work experience is not required for the one year program. Okay. Uh, next question I'm going to ask is from, okay, so this question is from Ishwarya Sharma. She's asking, don't we have any scholarship program provided by the university? She's asked this question to Aaron. Okay, so uh, one of the things that uh, is, that, that, that we basically talk about is that uh, we do have scholarship levels at the undergraduate level. But one of the things that the university has done is what they've incorporated is a tuition reduction rate with the graduate programs. So typically, uh, students that would come to us uh, at, at the undergraduate level uh, per credit would be around like 9, 925. And that, that would be the same technically uh, at the graduate level too, as the credit would be 925. Uh, but uh, the university does want to be competitive and does want to provide uh, some sort of a, a, what we would say is a discount, which is in the tuition. And that's where the MBA comes in as far as that five, five, nine, five. 590, five, nine, five, nine, yeah, five, nine, right. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, that technically, if you average that out, uh, you're looking at $300 per credit less than, than what it would typically be. So we incorporate that. Um, and 
while we incorporate that, we've looked at that as far as like the tuition average. Um, and, and like I was saying, when you're looking at competitiveness, uh, that that puts us right there at most uh, at the lower end of tuition costs for an MBA program and actually for graduate programs and definitely within that in the United States. Okay. okay. Fine. So um, students, if you want to ask your questions directly to the expert, you can click on raise hand tab. I will unmute you and you can ask your question. So now we're going to take a few live questions. I uh, the next question is going to be from Andukuri Amitraj. I am going to unmute you and you can ask your question directly. You have to also unmute yourself. Yeah, my uh, question is that what is the percentage for the placements in Oklahoma University for one year MBA program? That's a hard question um, that I cannot answer. I will be very honest with you about that. Um, as we have, uh, uh, there is, uh, if we if we looked at a placement rate for graduates of the one-year MBA program, I think there would be a very great difference between our, our students from the U.S. and our international students. The presumption is that all international students who come to the U.S. Uh, are not necessarily expecting to to stay. Um, if we have an international student who, who comes to the US and studies, they have the opportunity to apply for one year of optional practical training upon graduation. And, and that gives them a time frame to secure a job opportunity that would allow them to gain experience to apply what they had learned in their educational program. Uh, there are very specific elements that go along with with businesses in Oklahoma and other places in the U.S. in in making a job offer to someone who came here and studied on an F-1 visa. Is this is this right, Aaron? Can you speak to to some of that information? Yeah. So uh, as you as you know, internationals have the difficulty in in finding a job now. Internships. Afterwards, for during that one year uh, OPT time, that that could be that, that could be you know more on a reasonable level. Um, I, I think one of the benefits about our university is where we're located in the downtown area and our connections to businesses um, that could that play at least places you in a better position um, to possibly get into uh, maybe like that internship or the, or a job or a job per se uh, for that one year. Uh, after after you graduate, um, I, I do know that uh, you know one of the one of the things about us because we are a smaller university uh, and, and you're more catered and understanding your your professors that and we also you know train you on your on interviews and stuff like that. I would I would probably say the percentage is a lot higher than other universities as far as placing international students. Mathematically, it's it's very difficult for larger universities uh, to have a high percentage in place in international students, just because of the num because of the size of the university, all the students that are graduating, it, it's very difficult uh, for that for that particular university uh, to place a student. Whereas with us, um, it, it could, it's more we're more capable, or, or the percentage is a lot probably a lot higher than you would see at, at bigger universities. I would also add that we have the tremendous benefit of knowing our students and helping to try to make that match between their interests and possible possible uh, job opportunities for that OPT year. But that, that process itself is very structured in the US and there are constraints on companies. So we are familiar with organizations that that typically are able and in looking for students, uh, recent graduates who participate in OPT with mm -hmm. them. Right. Okay. Any further questions, Andhukuri? Um, no, ma'am. Okay. I'm fine. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for the question. That was okay, good. We will take another live question. This is from Mohammed Ahmed. Ahmed, I'm going to unmute you and you can ask your question. Are 
you can ask your question, Ahmed. I think there's some problem with this mic. Uh, we'll move forward to the next question. I am going to unmute Murshida and you can ask your question. You have to say, uh, unmute yourself also, Murshida. Uh, Murshida, please unmute yourself and then you can ask your question. And we'll take further questions then. Okay. You, you're more than welcome to type it. It's it's <laughs> and mute button. No, I think they're typing also. <laughs> Must be some problem with their audios. Yeah. So this is from Krishna. He's asking, I'm in the fifth semester of BA English Literature now. Am I eligible for the MBA program in the year of 2021? Uh, Aaron, I don't know. Uh, I, we are. Well, let me let me think through this. Uh, if if we have if we have a student in the fifth semester applies at this time, there they still have uh, considerable coursework to go. Correct. Um, where there's still remaining uh, fifth semester of a three year bachelor's. Um, yeah, that, we, we, we want to have a good sense of of the academic coursework so we could we could begin a review but we will be interested in seeing a a not doesn't have to be absolutely complete transcript but the majority of the of the coursework should be completed for us to be able to to uh, make make too much of a, a, a prediction as far as admission Aaron do you want to speak to that? yeah so i and i don't i don't know if you mentioned this or not but so with our mba program we have one entry term uh which is what we call our fall entry term which is typically in august uh and so uh, there's not necessarily some some schools may have multiple entry terms uh we just we just have the one entry term for that one uh which would which i like i said which would come in august time uh so the best time really to start applying for that is toward maybe your last semester uh, within that within that time frame. Uh, you could, you know, if you're in, if you've already completed your your three years into a four year, or if you complete your three years, obviously go ahead and try to apply. Uh, and then if you're wanting to do kind of the two pathways, um, but typically um, normally your last semester, even if, one of the things about us is we can still look at your transcripts and even though you've not completed. If you're in your last semester and you've got all your marks, uh, you got your semester uh, marks ready to go, uh, send that to us and let us look at it. And then we could, we could pretty much give a good hypothetical guess uh, as far as where you stand. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, next question is going to be from Shubham. Um, this is going to be live questions. Shubham, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Uh, my question is that if an if an applicant is uh, from international student and he's applying from uh, apply for a special learning disability, uh, apply for a special learning disability, can can the Oklahoma University provide in that category? We are required to provide accommodations for any student who has a who has doc, a documented learning disability that would include uh, we, there is a specific process uh, that requires documentation and so just as we would for any u.s citizen who has who has documentation we would do that that same for an international student um, in in most cases uh, and and it has to do with the individual disability but uh, we have have many students who have standard or approved for for standard accommodations 
that might be extended time on tests, uh, a variety of different elements. So that goes through our university disabilities coordinator. You would be happy, uh, you'd be welcome to uh, send an email to me and uh, or to Erin and we would be happy to, to uh, direct you to someone who would be able to respond to, to your specific situation uh, to maybe provide the general starting information. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. I appreciate Thank it. Mm -hmm. Thank you so Thank much, Shiva. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, fine. We'll take the next question from Shreyansh. Shreyansh, uh, please unmute yourself and you can ask your question. Shreyansh. Uh. Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, hello. Uh, so my question is, uh, I'm pursuing CA currently and uh, I've done my three years degree from Mumbai University. So is the CA degree equivalent to four year degree in US or uh, not? If it is if it is a three year 90 credit, you know, basically 90 credit hour degree in the US, a four year degree is a minimum of, I believe, a, a, an absolute minimum of, of at least 120 credit hours. So I think it has to do with the number of credits that have been earned that can be seen as equivalent. So I would think in, in general that uh, something that is termed a three-year degree, uh, we, we in general cannot, cannot expect to accept it as a four-year. But if the if there there are some very very accelerated programs um, that exist in the world, so I, I I would say it may have to do with a transcript review that would go through Aaron's Aaron's department. Yeah, we'd be happy to talk with you through that, to kind of look at the transcript, to sit there and uh, say yes or no. Um, so please please feel free. Just because we would say, well, three year degrees don't necessarily apply. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that your three-year degree did have that many credits to equal the four years. Uh, sir, actually, it's a professional degree. It's not a bachelorate degree, CA. So. Accountancy is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. so, we would we would be happy to look at it. Mm -hmm. right. I'm doing it currently, so I haven't finished it yet. I'm in my final level current uh, right now. I, we would be happy to to look at what you what you currently have to yeah, be okay. able to begin that discernment process to mm -hmm. to share back some information with you. Okay, because in many of the other countries, a uh, CA degree is equivalent to bachelor degree. That that's why oh, we in, would that's why we would want to review it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I send the transcripts uh, to you or Aaron, sir, uh, as soon as possible. To Aaron, so, preferably. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Please send it out to us. Thank you so much, Rayanj. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, thank you for the question. Okay. Okay. So next question, I'm going to take. This is from uh, Kalyavani. Uh, you can ask your question. Uh, please unmute yourself and you can ask your question. Very good evening, ma'am. Yes, I'm Kalyavani Art from uh, Chennai, Tamil Nadu. Yes, I'm having some question at, uh, I'm currently doing my bachelor degree of commerce mm -hmm. and I, aim to pursue my material management ma'am because uh, specification i want to do specification in the uh, product uh, product sector companies so is that uh, any specification in, in the we we currently do not offer specializations within our MBA program. We did for many many years, and after a a thorough review of of job opportunities in the long run, uh, and we we made a move in 2015, and we offer the leadership MBA, which is a very general approach that ensures that we thoroughly cover all of the bases that are expected in any Master of Business Administration program. 
in an in-depth fashion and are not currently offering specializations in 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 areas that would be unique and designed for that that student to to be primarily qualified only in that area. So at present, I will say that that we do not, but we also ha have the opportunity for students to work with faculty to discuss their own career aspirations, their areas of interest, and then seek out ways that they can, they can tailor make their experiences uh, and, and pursue additional opportunities that might help help provide additional qualifications in those areas uh, since we are small and get to know our students, but we do not offer specialization areas outside of one area, which is uh, healthcare, healthcare administration. So, uh, so I'm, I'm sorry that we don't have that. We think it's important to be able to be clear about what we do offer and what, and what we do not specifically. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, ma'am, I understood. Thank you for your answer. You're welcome, thank you. Any more questions? <laughs> Sorry, uh, are you able to hear me now? Yes, yes. thank you. <laughs> okay, oh, my, my mic was on mute. So this question is from Radhidayam. He's asking that I'm from Bhopal, India. I want to study abroad MBA program, but my age is 42 years and I have not given IELTS. I'm working for 15 years. I did my graduation BE Mechanical Engineering with 67%. At present, my understanding is, uh, well, I will number one say that, that we would be very excited to have, uh, have him study with us and, uh, and with years, all of those years of experience. Um, uh, I, I, we do not have a general provision to to accept work experience in exchange for the English proficiency requirement. Um, that is, uh, that is a, a requirement. We would assume if someone had uh, proficient English skills that, the, that they would likely have the ability to, to meet that 83 on the TOEFL or the 6.5 on the IELTS exam clear proficient understanding and communication skills in English written and verbal are imperative to success in in the MBA program uh, and so so we we can't have a lot of latitude as far as the English proficiency I would say I would very much love to uh, love to, to talk more and and to discuss it but we we don't have we don't have a clear pathway forward to just accept work experience in exchange, but would be happy to discuss the different the different uh, methods for that are accepted for that demonstration of English proficiency. Okay, okay, fine. I'll take up the next question. This is from Daniel. He's asking uh, due to all this um, COVID situations. Is the university providing online programs also, or they are also looking for doing hybrid programs, hybrid classes? At present, um, in in what we have done for this this current semester, is we have students who are who we are conducting classes on our campus, and so the students in our current one year MBA program, they are we are conducting those classes four mornings a week on our campus but we do have some students who may have um, ongoing uh, ongoing underlying conditions that make it uh, make it not 
not a good possibility for them to be in the classroom. In our classroom, in the live classes, everyone is wearing masks and we and they are distanced out in the classroom. So we are providing that social distancing and protecting of everyone. But we do, if someone is in a, has a health condition that they should not be in the classroom for uh, for an extended period of time or even a week or two, perhaps they're in isolation, we have the opportunity for them to to participate in what we refer to as remote learning. And what that means is that live classroom session is being live Zoomed. And so a student who has that level of approval is expected to be participating while that class is taking place in the classroom on the campus with their peers. And so they would see and hear and participate in dialogue as that class was taking place. That's not typically what is, that probably falls more under the, the suggestion of the hybrid model. So there is typically a live class taking place and then we may have some students who are not physically there and participating via Zoom. We do have one MBA instructor who, who himself is, has an underlying condition. And so he is, he is live Zooming his class to all of the students that he has. And so that means everyone is participating at the same time. We do have a fully parallel, fully online MBA program um, that is not designed for necessarily for completion in one year. And so if we ever have a student who lives um, outside of our geographic area, which might be another state in the US or it might be another country, um, they, could, they could participate in our online program. An international student would not be able to do that under an F1 visa uh, as a student. Mm -hmm. But if they wanted to participate from home, they could, uh, could earn a Master of Business Administration from Oklahoma City University in a more traditional online format uh, where they are, you know, they have content available that they determine when they watch it and when they when they uh, submit the, the items by, by uh, the, the various deadlines. COVID has caused us, uh, everyone in the world to be more creative and Minder School of Business is, is right there, right there with them. And the Zoom opportunities for the classes have provided um, such great capacity for making sure we can continue to serve our students with rich interactive experiences in our MBA. I hope that helped. Okay. Uh, I'll take the next question. This is from Kemi. He's asking, I would like to know what are the deadlines to apply for MBA program? Aaron, you want to take that? Mm -hmm. Well, um, like I said, we, we do have one entry. Uh, we do not necessarily have a pure on deadline uh, and so you kind of come in on this one too uh, so so we don't sit there and tell you well you got to apply before you know june or july or, or not at all type situations um what we mostly do our measurements on at least within our office is we determine you know when are you what's the visa uh, ability for you to go into the us and get a visa uh, the wait period times for that. Um, but we also, uh, we recommend that you do apply at least, uh, uh, I mean, to definitely apply, I would say at least a month or two out at the uh, kind of as a deadline, uh, if not earlier than that, um, because it does take time. It takes time for us to review, uh, uh, review things. Plus it does take time for you to get all your materials, all your documentations and, and set up a time for an interview uh, with the U.S. Embassy. So um, no deadlines per se, uh, but uh, you, we do obviously look at kind of uh, when when's a feasible time for, for you to go into the U.S. Embassy. You can add on to that if okay. you need to. I, I would like to oh, add on, if I may, that um, that we are small and so we can move as quickly as we must, but I think the, the greater concern is on the applicant's part. Um, there are so many details and there are processes that are outside of your control that it is typically to the applicant's advantage, long-term advantage, to apply earlier rather than later. Uh, my general approach to things is, 
if if you these are big decisions to determine where you want to pursue an MBA, especially if you're going to leave your home country. And so having as much information as possible will help lead you to what that right combination of factors is as far as the program. And that's only truly that information is only truly available if you know you have been admitted to that university. And so so my recommendation is if if you have um, if you have a number of schools that you have a high interest in that you think that they look like a good fit, I would encourage the applicant to apply to the number of schools that they think are that good fit to then determine where did I gain admission, to then drill down to more specific questions um, so that you have ample time for that visa interview process. The worst thing would be to to gain admission at the last minute and then and think you're done and then find that you don't have proper processing time to get that visa and then you're not able to begin a program in the year that you had planned. So we're we're happy to talk with people sooner rather than later to, to help you with all of that information. Okay. Okay, uh, we'll take the last question for today, which will be from uh, Ishika. Ishika, I'm going to unmute you and you can ask your question. Please unmute yourself also. Uh, hello, uh, so the, my question is that how many international students does the program usually admit? Well, I, I'll kind of just kind of throw a, we don't typically require, like we don't cap on on students coming into the program itself, I would assume. Uh, uh, and we definitely don't cap as far as uh, determining the disproportion between Americans and international students. So um, uh, I don't know if that would, I don't know if you want to chime in on that or not, Cindy, but we we don't we uh if you're looking at probably ratio uh Cindy could probably probably do that ratio as she did but uh, we, we don't we don't make a determination as far as okay we can only accept a certain amount of international students uh towards american students so well and just as i just as i shared a moment ago uh, we we expect that applicants are applying typically to a number of schools and not just one. So we will we will provide positive admission decisions to the students that we feel like are a good fit and would be successful. Not all of those students are going to are going to come to Oklahoma City University in the August that they are initially admitted. And so so we we review each application independently. Uh, we don't have a separate process for for this is how we're gonna review an international applicant versus this is how we're gonna review a US citizens application. So so we are looking at those in a in a in in a somewhat unfettered, uh, you can't say blind because there, you know, there's difference in information process, but we are looking, we are looking at application by application. Typically in the past few years, um, with this cohort format typically of the students who do matriculate in August and join our program, it has been about 25% international and 75% um, US domestic students. But we, that is not an imposed ratio in any way, the way Aaron, Aaron explained that, he's correct. Yeah. I think one thing that you'll, you'll find about us is that we try to be as accommodating as possible. This also goes back to as far as deadlines and stuff like that we want to help you through this process and we understand that you may have had your thoughts on school didn't quite work out and and where we could be a fallback you know <laughs> it doesn't that doesn't really matter to us um that we can accommodate you uh, i think that's the overall uh concept that we want to get across uh, so but if a student applies and is admitted you have a place with us <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's the key. And so to apply, to complete the application and then receive the admission decision tells you that path is open. And then you have the opportunity to continue through that discernment process to gather more information to say, is this the right place? Is this the right time? And we are happy to, to assist with that process. We're going to be here this year. We're going to be here next year and we're going to be here out in the future. So we're happy to provide you with just, just good, honest input. Mm -hmm. 
and I, I forgot to mention that uh, currently, um, it, it, and you can uh, one thing you can apply a year out. Um, it, so uh, currently, our next our next one's not till August, but you can start applying now. And I'd actually encourage that. Uh, and this is kind of why we we have a uh, currently right now through uh, I want to say till the end of November or so uh, we are waiving the application fee. <clears throat> so if if you do apply now, uh, which like you can apply for the MBA program now, uh, we can provide you kind of that code uh, for you to waive that application fee. It saves you sixty dollars. Um, uh, we're also on the Common App, I believe. I don't know if that applies for master programs. I don't. I don't think for graduate, graduate programs it does. Okay. So sorry, um, but uh, so as far as if if you want to go ahead and just apply. Uh, I think now would be a pretty good time with us. Okay. Thank you so much, Aaron. Thank you so much, Cindy, for such an informative session. I hope students must have got their question queries resolved by attending this session. Otherwise, students, you already you can see the um, contact details of Aaron, and you can get in touch with him in case you have further queries. Or otherwise, you will be getting in touch with. Siksha counselors from Siksha who will help you in your application process to Oklahoma City University. I would now like to thank Aaron and Cindy again for taking out time and for helping students knowing more about Oklahoma City Universities. Thank you students for taking out time and joining the session today. I will I'll, I'll now close the session. Thank you so much everyone. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. It's our pleasure speaking with you guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>